Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you are new around here every single day at 1pm, we release an update just like this one to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space. And we also look at it from a technical point of view and we correlate other markets to our small but very significant space. So if that sounds good, guys, and you do like this update, please do consider becoming a subscriber. Like and a comment is always appreciated. We have a lot to get into in this video. It has been a rather interesting week. Of course, we saw the delaying of um, a decision on a Bitcoin spot ETF. And we're going to be doing a number of things in this video. I want to start things off with a clip of Jay Clayton, the former SEC chair, actually talking about the inevitability of a Bitcoin spot ETF. I do still not believe that, there, that the pessimism that's currently here at this stage is at all warranted. You know, things don't look too bad at all. Okay, from a price point of view, if you're an altcoin holder like I am, it's been a very volatile time period. But if you look at the markets broadly, and even if Bitcoin has a deeper correction from here, and we've looked at both the what Bitcoin needs to do to turn around after the drop um, on the 17th of August to, okay, well, look, you lose this support, you're looking at going short. Um, so Bitcoin can still have a deeper correction, and we still believe that's actually a healthy structure altcoins are getting rather thrown around but altcoins always do at a kind of um uh, bottoming period you know if you look at some of our favorite altcoins like dot for example it's essentially where it was um at the start of the year and this is very kind of uh to use who shall we use as an example ethereum this is very this is very much the nature of the beast with the bottoming structure for altcoins this is essentially where i think you are ladies and gentlemen and ultimately you have this to come i Again, do not believe the pessimism that is here is warranted, okay? We were very pessimistic on the price prospects of crypto in 2022, but ultimately don't think that that, that need is warranted. And, and it's not just crypto that people are now very pessimistic on. They've also turned max bearish on the stock market, which I don't think is warranted, so on and so forth. We're going to cover all of that in this video. So we're going to be looking at a clip from Jay Clayton, what he has to say. Um, then I'm going to be showing you that the SEC are going to lose the battles that they are in. Now, they are undoubtedly going to win some of them, but we've got things. This is breaking from uh, Ripple uh, in regards to the response to the SEC's recent filing for an appeal and how it's not warranted and somewhat unlawful. We've then got news. It was a huge win actually for Uniswap that most people did not even notice in regards to the... Um, classification that Uniswap is not a security because it's a utility-based token and essentially a software protocol that is not responsible for the losses and gains that users make um, in regards to their investment decisions. Um, and then we are going to, and I've not seen anybody play this clip, become an All In Crypto subscriber, ladies and gentlemen, listen to Annalise Osborne from Wisdom Tree talk about the fact that regulations are holding people back from coming out publicly and saying what they are really doing in regards to crypto. Every single, bar none, major financial institution, central bank, government, all have plans and are already working on ways to implement blockchain technology. Some of the public blockchains that you guys um, will know about in their business models. And the only thing holding them back, and you'll hear this from the horse's mouth, is regulatory clarity. They are not going to come out publicly because they don't want to put themselves in any kind of a uh, crosshairs from the likes of an overzealous SEC. So we've got a lot to cover, guys. Let's get into it all. Um, let's start things off by taking a look at the events uh, previously from a fundamental point of view. Then we'll correlate it with the technicals. So, of course, we did have this. these decisions denied uh, or delayed by the SEC. It's a delay, it's not a denial. Some of the comments were, okay, the earliest we'll look to um, approve or not approve something will, of course, be mid-October, which is when the next deadline falls into line. So, an ETF is coming. The next deadline will, will come. It doesn't really matter to me if they hold it back till the final deadline, which will be next year, because the inevitability is that it, it's going to be here. I personally think, and I'm going to be talking to my patrons about this tomorrow, that September is, we looked at September yesterday, historically, and how it performs as a month for Bitcoin. 
traditionally quite a bad month, but October and November are traditionally great months. If you can get through September, I think you're going to do just fine. And I'm not expecting all of a sudden everyone instantly, oh, we're going to 12K Bitcoin. Okay, maybe that's always a possibility, but how, have you, how has there been that switch all of a sudden um, and people max bearish when the Bitcoin chart looks like this? Um, doesn't make that much sense to me. There aren't, there are some not great signs here for sure. Um, and we can cover them when we get into the technicals. But first of all, I want to play a clip of Jay Clay and, and finish off on this kind of um, SEC delaying another Bitcoin spot ETF news. Let's go ahead and get into that uh, and listen to some of the former chair's comments on this. This is breaking. It came out yesterday. It is clear that Bitcoin is not a security. It is clear that Bitcoin is something that retail investors want access to, that institutional investors want access to. And importantly, some of our most trusted providers who are fiduciaries or have duties of best interest want to provide this product to the retail public. So I think... As Anthony said, an approval is an inevitable. Uh an approval is an inevitability. It's inevitable. It is indeed, guys. Um, I really, it's tokenization is something that I keep thinking about and the ramifications it has for the entire world, not just the already existing markets, but the ones that are going to form around it. And you're going to get this gold rush in tokenization. And many of the blockchains that we cover on this channel are going to be at the helm of that. So we know what the Bitcoin's price uh, is doing. Um, essentially, you know, we've been in a nice uptrend. We've looked at the possibility of Elliott Wave theory and said, okay, this is your one, two, three, four, five. A, potentially B, maybe there's a C correction coming. This could tie in with um, a sort of the right way up head and shoulders. We don't just cover the bull case. Short term, we've been expressing our kind of concerns from here in regards to not being that sure which way things are going short term, i.e. up to a month. It then broke to the downside. We knew a volatile move was coming here based on Bollinger Bands and, and uh, historic volatility being a low, broke to the downside. You've then been ranging. You've rallied up on the grayscale news, probably come back down likely on, for me, more so the dollar than anything being strong. And of course, there's news always associated with it, but technicals will always lead. And now you're just consolidating at around about 26K. It's not the end of the world, right? If you look at the Bitcoin chart since the start of the year, it doesn't look that bad. Altcoins, yes, they are getting thrown around. That's how this game goes, unfortunately. I think people forget just how volatile altcoins are and they try and apply traditional market principles from an investment point of view to altcoins, right? That move, some of them 10% a day. And they try and apply risk management to that and you, of course, have to apply some risk management, but it's not, I don't think, I think there's nuance that you need to apply with altcoins. Um, and again, if you look at sort of how altcoins typically bottom, it's in a very volatile fashion, guys, unfortunately. You know, this was 330% up, then this was 66% down. Then it went 150% up, then it went 60 seven percent down and then it went you know five thousand percent up we rode all of this it, it, it you know it, everyone's always a smart ass with uh, hindsight in mind but back to the charts before we get into a load more interesting things for you i don't think things look too bad okay um and and we looked at the possibilities of a number of things we looked at and it's probably best to use bitfinex for this although i think bitfinex th this was the kind of thing that we were looking at yesterday and this is a potential scenario. Of course, if this head and shoulders plays out, this is going to give you a target, taking it from the neckline of uh, 24,700 of round about here. So this is going to come back into this price consolidation here. It then kind of throws this head and shoulders that we've got a little bit out the window. It doesn't need to. It could do something like that and then recover very quickly, you know, coming towards the end of September. Um, for now, you look for... It's showing you weakness. You look for downside. You look for taking out these points. This one's going to be a big one because then you're breaking market structure and then you look for levels down here. Okay. And I actually think that's going to create a golden opportunity, but that's for you guys to um, decide whether you take or not. The crypto revival is here, ladies and gentlemen. The news always makes things. The, the thing is with crypto right now, you've got very little 
interest in it whatsoever. So everything's amplified. Uh, any anything that, there's, that that happens that's significant is amplified because of the kind of dullness of the uh, the nature of the beast that we're in. Um, and if you look at this candle here, this is a bad candle. I hate these candles. These are it's basically a spinning top at a point where it's not at a top. I've followed by a doji, which was showing a bit of indecision. You did have one of those here, so you could end up with a scenario where Bitcoin just does something like this over September, and then it springboards off, and then this just becomes a retest. You know, we're doing some teaching stage analysis at the moment. I think stage analysis is probably the best um, investment guide from a technical point of view for retail investors. I think it's the simplest, the most accurate um, in regards to the things that you apply to it and the, and the kind of rules that you give it. Um, so bit, it doesn't, Bitcoin doesn't have to plummet here. It can just consolidate, but you look for the downside until there's reason to start looking for short-term upside. Mid to long-term, the crypto revival is already here, ladies and gentlemen, and whether you're on that train or not is entirely up to you. Let's now move on and move away from the technicals a little bit. Um, before I do that, I just want to make one quick comment on the dollar. Dollar's been very strong. We've said the dollar needs to roll. This is a super, <laughs> this is what we were drawing for yesterday, super strong candle. It's the opposite of what Bitcoin did, right? Um, and that's the, the, the whole thing summed up there. This is the opposite of what Bitcoin's doing. It's Bitcoin, US dollar. You need to see that dollar weakness. Dollar's catching a bit on yields going up, which is driving everything, on inflation fears, um, and of course, on the potential of further interest rate hikes. So there's also a kind of FX effect uh, and other nations that you need to weigh the dollar up against. Certainly Europe, which is having some pretty bad data. Um, moving on, guys, I want to go on to some recent um, sort of news relating to the Ripple case. As expected, Ripple demonstrates that an interlocutory appeal here is simply not warranted. The SEC always maintains how it is a fact-specific inquiry and for an inquilatory appeal to be warranted, the Second Circuit should not have to review the extensive factual record footnotes to destroy the SEC's argument on this matter. So reasonable persons would or would not have concerning acts claimed to have been negligent until it decided to seek inaugural in to locatory appeal. The SEC itself had always taken that same position in this case, whether or not particular transactions involved an offer and sale of securities will depend on the facts and circumstances. How we must be applied to the facts and circumstances at hand. Indeed, it is affirmative motion for summary judgment and its opposition. The SEC submitted more than 2,000 factual assertions that it claimed were relevant and uh, material. Because the question the SEC presents for interlocutory appeal would require the Second Circuit to review this court's application of the law to the evidence uh, adduced in the party's summary judgment motions, an interlocutory appeal is inappropriate so on and so forth. So they're losing a lot of battles. They lost the Grayscale report. Um, lots of people let this fly completely under the under the radar. SDNY judge Catherine Polk Fallier, the judge who's also in charge of the Coinbase case, so this is a, an inkling into how things are going to go, um, has thrown out a class action lawsuit against Uniswap, ruling the software Uniswap cannot be held accountable for the losses of its users or the damage caused by third parties. Absolutely, it's a no. It's common sense. Uh, the SEC. This is a power grab from the SEC. It's a stalling from them. It's a complete tactic, um, a regulatory tactic. It's a power grab, and of course, it's at the cost of uh, of, of um, crypto holders and believers like myself and you guys. But this is how the game goes. It's an unfair world that we live in. Don't 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 search for equality in an unequal world. Uh, it doesn't exist. And if you try and implement those rules, you're defying the very laws of nature, I'm afraid, guys. So in this regard, the court seem, sees merit in defendants' uh, counterpoints that this case is more like an effort to hold a developer and self-driving car liable for a third-party use of the card to commit a traffic violation or rob a bank. Ouch! Uh, uh, ouch! On the topic of regulations, I want to leave you on, I love and leave you on this clip. Um, this is uh, Annalisa from Wisdom Tree. 
talking about the current state of where things are at, regulations and what all the big companies are doing and why they aren't coming out publicly and saying a lot of this. Digital marketing market fund, right? Wisdom Tree has one. Ondo is there. Arca Labs, we had a we had the US Treasury Fund. Um, but it's, I feel like people want to, and companies and compliance and risk officers want to both work with and custody, for example, because custody, I think, is, is going to be an issue as well. But part of this, you know, from a, from a public private perspective, I think there's a lot of things that tie together because regulation touches that too, because regulation is one of the reasons everybody's private right now too. And yeah. people are concerned that if, if, you know, why would we create something that then we're against regulation? Because again, this is where the suits come in. This is where we need the experience and we need to make sure that we're protecting everyone's best interests. There you have it, guys. Why they're keeping things private at the moment is due to regulations. W regulations are the very thing that send this industry into the stratosphere, just like a spot ETF will send Bitcoin into the stratosphere. We know it's coming. You've just got to be able to weather the storm. Um, I'm sure many of you run and, and, and do other sort of endurance exercises. That endurance um, is really a mental toughness. You can apply that to being an altcoin holder at, at times. Um, and yeah, you know, th th there's always risks with everything in life. Um, investing in crypto is no different. Uh, and hopefully nobody's too down in the dumps with the volatility. It's been a frustrating year for myself. We've been just buying crypto this year. We were out for the what we consider the bulk of the bear market. Um, some altcoins have, have done us dirty. Algorand is one um, that I'm, I'm, I'm down on. Uh, you know, you get transparency from this channel. We'll tell you when we're, we're down on a position. We'll tell you when we're we're doing well on a position. Um, you get the highs and the lows. Um, but overall, still very confident in where we're at. Um, and, and we'll see what the future holds. You know, will I be proven to be wrong or right? You guys will get to follow that journey. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it. So as a comment, I'm going to love and leave you on that note. Have a smashing Saturday, guys. See you in the next.